Welcome back to Ox Tools, I'm Tom. So it looks like it's another meatloaf episode and I got some interesting stuff for you guys to see. Um, got some new machines in the shop. Um, I just came back from a trip from the East Coast. I was back in Pennsylvania on business and uh, I'm going to show some uh, little teaser clips of some of the stuff that, uh, that, I, that I saw and went and visited. Um, visited some other YouTubers there while I was there. And uh, so I have some clips of that. Some of those will just be separate videos because uh, it makes more sense to do that. Um, got some viewer mail and a few other things. So uh, let's get started. Let's have a look at this stuff. All right. This first one here, it's a little hammer that comes to us from uh, uh, Doug Maxwell. And uh, he's in Arvada, Colorado. And uh, he was cleaning out some stuff in his shop and uh, he ran across this. and decided to send it in. So uh, Doug, is uh, he's had a mill and a lathe for a little while and uh, he was planning on putting them in the basement and uh, has since changed his plan. He's been uh, inspired by uh, the YouTube community to uh, kind of get going and get his shop in shape and, uh, and uh, get, get down to business. So this looks like one of these, oh yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a multi-tool here. We got a, oh, okay, keeps going here, huh? Okay, so we got a, a little screwdriver, a little, I don't know, a little punch or a scribe or something there. Okay, flat blade goes into that. Yeah, this is a good little project if you wanted to make something and practice your threading and uh, some other stuff. There's another flat blade. No Phillips on this one. And this goes on here. So if you wanted to practice your threading and knurling, this might be, a, uh, might be a good little project for somebody to do. Anyway, Doug, thank you very much for sending that by, and uh, good luck getting your shop set up. Send me some pictures when you, uh, when you get it together and, uh, and, it's, and uh, can show it to us. Thank you, sir. All right. So this comes to us from a friend of mine, uh, uh, Brad Niven, and um, he actually teaches an engineering class, uh, a couple of engineering classes at a uh, local high school here. And he went to, uh, to Thailand recently uh, on vacation. And uh, anyway, he brought this thing back for me. And it's kind of crazy. Let's take a look at it. It's a Russian multi-tool. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I love the little logo on there. It's actually pretty extensive here. It even comes with sockets. But... Uh, this is one of those uh, one of those multi tools that they they didn't know when to stop. Okay, so it's got a little bit of everything on it. So obviously you see the hammer part, and, uh, and it's got a, a pipe wrench. Okay, <laughs> and then here we got a, a quarter inch drive for uh, for sockets. Okay, and then um, let's see. Let's open this up. Okay, so then it's pliers. All right. We can ply with our pliers. All right, let's close that up. And then it's got a variety of, uh, of knives and pokers and slicers and sawers and stuff like that. So ooh, look at that one. I didn't see that one. A little serrated nightmare there. Anyway, uh, Brad, thank you very much for, uh, for stowing that in your luggage and bringing it back. Uh, that's a pretty crazy uh, Russian multi-tool. So... Uh, uh, thank you. Okay, so you guys probably remember, uh, oh god, this is heavy. Um, you can remember a couple of weeks ago I was machining those long uh, bronze keys and I was, you know, I was fussing around with uh, stacking them together and whatnot. What I really needed was some long soft jaws and um, I just didn't have any here, okay? So I went and uh, I went ahead and bought some and these come to, these come from a company called Monster Jaws and uh, they're online and uh, they sell a variety of, uh, a variety of jaws uh, for Kurt vices and other kinds of vices and, um, and I, I can't even buy the steel for what they sell you the whole jaw for, okay? Made in the US, okay? Uh, these are steel, they're 10 inch, 10 inch long, two inch high, inch and a half wide. I can't even buy the steel for what I bought the whole thing for here. Actually, I'll just get them out of the box. Um, and there they are. They're counterboard. They're they're milled all the way around. Okay, even the ends. Okay, 
And this would have made my life a lot easier on those, uh, on those uh, keys because they'd only be sticking out a little bit on either end here, which we could have tolerated. So uh, um, anyway, check them out. If you need soft jaws for, uh, for Kurt vices or any other vices, check out Monster Jaws online. And uh, they sell direct um, and they ship from uh, California. So uh, check them out. Okay, so this next one's kind of interesting. This comes to us from my friend uh, Pete Ferguson, and he's in, um, well, he's, he lives in Canada, but right over the border uh, um, near uh, Michigan, so uh, I can't remember what city he lives in. Anyway, uh, he recently fired up his, uh, his surface grinder, and then um, he wanted to do this, uh, this five block test, right? So what he did, was he went ahead and did his five block test here, okay? And here's, uh, here's the pieces, okay? Um, and Pete's a pretty clever guy, he's an engineer, and uh, so what he did was he drilled one hole, two hole, three hole, four hole, five hole, okay? Um, to, um, you know, to identify the position where each of the little pucks came from, and he even knurled them and did the whole nine yards. Now. I, he made his life a little more difficult because this has more surface area to grind than this one. So, um, but he sent them to me, and we're gonna we're gonna inspect them here. Uh, probably not in this video because it'll take a little while to uh, to check these properly here. Um, so we're gonna measure all the thicknesses here very accurately and see how see how uh, Pete did. Okay. Now what he's done though is he's thrown out he's thrown the gauntlet down, and. Um, if anybody wants to per, wants to try uh, the five block challenge uh, on their grinder, um, so when I measure these, you know whatever numbers I get from that, so he'll be you know quote unquote the uh, the king of the hill so to speak, and then um, if somebody else wants to grind these um, and they're a little closer than. Um, um, then Pete's, uh, then they will become the quote unquote king of the hill. And then uh, Pete's blocks will go out to somebody else or whatever and uh, we'll just kind of keep this going a little while and see what happens. So if you're interested, uh, don't, put it in the, don't put it in the YouTube comments. Send me an email, okay? And send me a proper email, all right? And uh, we'll get these out to you and uh, you can grind them up and uh, um, and send them back and then we'll, we'll do some measuring. So no lapping allowed, okay? Uh, they gotta just be off the grinder um, and uh, you know, and uh, we'll go from there. So Pete, that's a, that's a good idea. We're gonna, we're, gonna give you a, we're gonna give you a try here and see what it is and um, we'll, uh, we'll measure these and see how you did. So he's got his numbers and then uh, we'll, uh, I'll figure out what my numbers are and then uh, we'll go from there, cool. All right, so this next one here comes to us from uh, Wes Harper. And, uh, ooh, you know what? I forgot what city he's in. Um, anyway, uh, Wes sent me this book, and uh, it's a pretty cool old book. Uh, it's from 1941. And uh, the first interesting thing here is uh, um, whoever bought this book, uh, it's Cadet um, Ed Nogus, uh, as in Noga. <laughs> Anyway, it's written with a fountain pen, uh, just looking at it here in uh, nice handwriting, uh, 1941. Anyway, there's a couple interesting things in here we'll take a look at. Um, and it's got some really, uh, some kind of cool fold-out uh, uh, drawings too, some large size. So let's uh, go to this first page. Oh, um, so this is a cross-section of, uh, of a valve. And um, what was interesting is it that you know in a, in, in a black and white book that they actually colored some of these things in here so uh, which uh, you know was a big deal back then um, so there's uh, some of these images and sections are colored so uh, it's just kind of cool all right uh, so that's why I flagged that one okay so this one's kind of neat here um, what we have is a it's a screw pump, right? So uh, it's a right hand, left hand thread, okay? And so here's the drive, that's the input. So it's, it's turning this shaft, which turns the other shaft with a herringbone gear here, okay? Uh, and herringbone gears are kind of interesting. We'll talk about that in just a sec. And then these, are, these fit together pretty closely and what it does is it, 
it's, it sucks material from this area here, brings it together, and then forces it out of the discharge here, okay? Now, if you look at this here, they've got, here's the herringbone gears up here. And um, so why would they use herringbone gears, okay? Well, my guess is this thing is operating at fairly, uh, I don't know, fairly good speed there. So if you use straight cut gears there, they're going to be noisy for one, okay? Um, so gears with helical teeth uh, operate smoother, okay? Now, as soon as you go to a helical gear here, what happens is, so if you take half of a herringbone there, that's a helical gear set, right? And, uh, but when you have helical gears, what it does is it introduces a, a thrust component um, uh, because of the helix angle of the gear. So the way herringbones get around that is they have two helix angles that uh, intersect, so they basically cancel the, the, uh, the tendency to, uh, to thrust in uh, one direction or the other, okay? So that's why they, uh, they use herringbones. Now, you don't see them that, that much anymore because they're kind of hard to make. Uh, and in fact, you can see a difference between this one here and that one there, okay? So this one here has, it has a relief in the center here, that little white line, and which means that they can take a cutter and they can cut all the way through the tooth into this relief area, into that little white relief area. And these are kind of one piece, and there's a very special machine that, uh, uh, that shapes those teeth. Um, and, you know, I have a book that shows a picture of this machine. It's pretty crazy in uh, how it, sh it shapes that whole t tooth without having a, a little relief area. It's kind of neat. So a uh, clever guy that thought of that, Mr. Herringbone or whatever his name was. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of a screw pump there, kind of an interesting uh, image there. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was one of these fold-outs. Just how extensive the only let me start over here. I think this is a pretty good size one here. Of course, I went the wrong way, right? Let's go fold that out. It folds out like that. And then I want to tear it. So look at this thing. It's massive. So this is a, uh, I can't read it upside down here. This is some kind of turbine here uh, with blades. So it's a, uh, um, it's a compressor of some sort or a pump or whatever. What does it say here? Section of divided flow turbine, okay? So pretty cool. I mean, you know, somebody sat there and uh, drew this all by hand. No solid works, no Fusion 360, all on the board. So this is, you know, when guys that did this were, were classically trained and they're, they're almost artists. So uh, um, anyway, pretty neat. So Wes, thank you very much for, uh, for sending this book. That's a cool book. And uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure Randy Richard has uh, probably uh, uh, worked on some of the stuff that they show in this thing. So uh, thank you very much, Wes. Okay, so... Uh, this is one of the, uh, the latest additions to the, uh, the Ox Tool shop here. Um, this is a Monarch uh, 10EE lathe. And um, I acquired this recently uh, from a local company. They were uh, consolidating two companies together, so I think they uh, decided to um, get rid of some of the smaller machines. And, uh, and anyway, this was one of them. Anyway, uh, uh, it was. I wasn't really looking for one, but uh, I lifted the tarp on this one and I went, oh, what do you want for that? And it was one of those uh, deals that uh, you can't say no to. Now, it's, it's in pretty rough condition. Um, you know, most everything is here. Uh, there's a few pieces that are, uh, that are kind of missing, but nothing too serious. Um, so it's a bit of a project to kind of bring it back. Um, this is a... Oh, 1956, I couldn't remember, um, and it has the Wyatt drive, which is the works in a drawer. So it's got a uh, uh, tube, you know, the tubes and whatnot. Uh, and I think that was one of the reasons that they, uh, they kind of set it aside was uh, you know, they couldn't sort out the drive. I happen to know uh, a local guy here that's uh, pretty sharp on these drives, and uh, he's already come out once, and we've taken a look at uh, a couple of things. and. Uh, 
um, we're, we're sorting through and I ordered some parts and uh, we're going to try again here in a, in a few days. So uh, anyway, uh, I'll bring you in a little closer. I'll show you some of its, uh, some of its rough spots here and you guys can uh, see the, the hamburgers that were, uh, um, that have uh, actually used this machine. So, all right. So this machine is actually set up uh, for uh, 3,000 or 4,000 RPM um, uh, spindle speed, which is kind of nice. And that's one thing that I've been looking for uh, uh, is a lathe that will do um, quite a bit of RPM for doing uh, small collet work. Um, anyway, here's uh, this is some of the rough stuff here. Uh, the compound's really kind of been, uh, been hamburgered here. I don't know what the heck they were doing but they weren't being very careful about it. So there's going to be a bit of work in fixing that up. Um, and you can see here they've chopped away at that. And how they did this, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. They must have been swung around this way and cutting angles on something that uh, they could bump into that uh, easily. So uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> um, what else? So this machine came out of... Uh, Originally, darn it, I can't remember now. Um, it's, uh, it's on the, the rear cover back here. There's a little tag. I put it up on Instagram. I just can't remember what it is. But uh, so it had an original asset tag on it, which was kind of neat. And uh, and then so I'm told that uh, if you call Monarch, uh, what's left of them, uh, they'll have a card on this machine, and you can actually see who bought it originally, what it was sold with originally. And then uh, if anybody else bought it later on and ordered parts for it, they kind of record that too as well. So uh, anyway, kind of kind of neat. And uh, I've already done a little bit of paint scraping here just to see, uh, you know, what I could do. And, uh, um, and then I'll weigh repairing the drive or replacing the drive as I get into it a little bit deeper. But uh, kind of exciting. And... Uh, Shop's pretty crowded right now because I got another machine to show you guys that kind of fell out of the sky into my lap and uh, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Okay, so this is the other machine that just, uh, <laughs> like I said, fell out of the sky uh, uh, recently in my lap. Uh, this was a more uh, directed attack here for me. This came up on a sealed bid auction and uh, I bid on it and, and won it. Now, I used to have one of these years ago, and I ended up selling it to the company I used to uh, manage down in Pleasanton, and I've been kicking myself ever since because these are just absolutely fantastic saws here. Um, so if you're not familiar with, with a Marvel saw, you should get familiar because they're really a nice machine. And uh, now this one's been outside for a little while. It's got some rust on it, but, but no uh, heavy pitting or anything. You know, most everything is there. And it, it needs some TLC and a little bit of uh, a little bit of mechanical repair. Uh, this is one of the lower uh, blade guides here that uh, uh, the bearings were frozen up. So you know I'm fiddling around with it to, to kind of bring it back. So I'll show you what the basic operation of this is, so that you can be familiar with it. Because this is a really this is slick setup here. All right, let's check out the uh, the basic features of this thing here. So um, the blade's off of it right now, but the, the blade runs much like a vertical bandsaw does, okay? And, um, but what's, what's different about this particular saw is that the blade actually moves in relation to the work, okay? So when we have something, uh, when we have something in, to cut in here, it stays positioned and it's, it's fixed, okay? And the whole uh, carriage moves in like so, okay and cuts through the part okay so what's what's kind of neat about these is you can set them up near a stock rack and this is a straight path into the stock rack or whatever and you don't have to scoot the saw around uh, um, you know depending on size or whatever right they're kind of neat that way um, so for cutting miters and whatnot you don't have to move the vise uh, you move the head on this particular machine so I'll loosen it up you guys and see, so the head tips, it tips this way, uh, up to 45 degrees, or actually a little bit past, and it also tips the other way, which makes it super handy. Um, so now you don't have to, uh, you don't have to cut from two directions on the saw. 
You can do all your cuts with the stock in the vise on one side. You can get additional vices or you can flip the vise on this side if you want. Or you can clamp in T-slots here as well. So it's kind of neat. Um, capacity wise, um, you can cut 18 inches tall. <laughs> okay. And you can cut 18 inches in this direction here. Okay. So this thing will come all the way forward and cut 18 inches in this direction. So theoretically you could cut an 18 by 18 square block in this. Oops. Not cooperating back there. Um, so it also has some stops on the other side which you kind of need so you can stop the blade so you can cut a notch out of a piece if you want or do things like that and it'll run all by itself. Um, so multiple speeds, you know the usual stuff. So, uh, But it's just a very very nice setup um, for fabricating and machine shops and things like that. So uh, nice addition to the shop. All right, so this is worth mentioning too. So this is the uh, this is the feed mechanism. So as I rotate this wheel this way, you know you can hand feed if you want, okay. But you can also power feed too. And uh, the way the power feed works is pretty clever. It's got a uh, a shaft that runs through here. Excuse me. And um, there's a little friction disc near the back uh, that collects uh, power from the motor and uh, drives against basically a clutch, right? Well, we can vary the amount of feed pressure, okay, by sliding this weight, and that's maximum feed pressure, and this is you know, minimum feed pressure here, okay? And what we do is there's a little lever over here that engages, there's a worm gear that engages this, okay? and uh, then drives this uh, drives the uh, the carriage forward okay and uh, it's just it's dog simple and uh, the friction material that's on the on the clutch is a, a bunch of corks and you, you plug these corks in there and then you sand them off so they're all at the same uh, um, in the same plane and clean the disc and uh, and off you go real simple to maintain and everything anyway and this is the sliding weight to uh, to vary the pressure so uh, they still use a, the similar, a very similar system, uh, even on the new ones of these. Uh, this is this is an old round top, and the new ones have a square top, so that's where the kind of the the, the name comes from. Anyway, dog simple. All right, guys, hope you liked that meatloaf episode. Um, what's next is some clips from my uh, trip to Pennsylvania. Um, I visited some uh, YouTubers out there, and uh, we'll check out some uh, some sites that I saw, and um some of the neat things that i did so uh, also i just wanted to mention that the kbc discount code is still good so uh, there's a uh, link in the description uh, that tells how to uh, activate the uh, the 15 percent discount code i think it's good for another month or two something like that anyway uh, if you're thinking about buying something uh, check out kbc and there's a little discount code 15 percent off so uh, anyway check out these clips and uh, i'll catch you next time all right, we're in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and uh, I have a little free time in my hand, so I decided to check out some of the um, steel making stuff that's still kind of around the historical things. And uh, where we are right now is uh, they call it the steel stacks, and what this is is the um, the blast furnaces uh, for the the steel making. And uh, apparently, they decided they didn't want to take them down. Uh, maybe it's too expensive or whatnot, but it's pretty impressive so let's let's take a look at it we're gonna see what we can snoop around uh, and uh, see what we can find so check it out I'm looking from the the fence inward but just the sheer size of this thing is just incredible I mean this is a machine here this is just kind of one corner I was of it walking along and I found a couple of gears <laughs> look at those herring bones Hey Adam, can you uh, fix this shaft for me? <laughs> All right, so we're at the uh, Moses Glick uh, scrap yard. Uh, somebody told me about this. Uh, Alex Kern told me about this. So we're gonna have a look around and and uh, see what kind of cool stuff these guys have squirreled away here. So we'll check it out. All right, so we're here at Lehigh University, and this is the Fritz Engineering Laboratory, and. Um, 
at one time this building housed the largest tensile and compression testing machines in the United States. Now I'm not sure where the, the largest ones are now, but uh, we're going to get a look, I think, at uh, a couple of pretty good sized ones here. So let's, uh, let's go commando here and uh, go snooping here and see what we can figure out. There's a little baby one right there. That's a small one, a little tensile compression tester there. It looks like a Tynus Olsen there. So, take a look around. Well, physics departments are always a good one to go looking for shops in. Let's see what we can find in here. Invariably, they're in the basement. Oh, that's looking good. Stage one. There. Well, this looks like ceramics or... Oh, uh, glass probably. Glass blowing. That's what it looks like. <laughs> 